This video is in response to Kenyan Muslims, a challenge to all atheist evolutionists on YouTube. I've seen this sort of argument before, and I might as well address this version of it, as it contains all of the basic errors and incorrect assumptions I've seen in all the other arguments like this. I'm not interested here in trying to disprove Allah or Yahweh or whatever deity anyone might think is responsible for creating the universe, but I would like to suggest that if science has taught us anything about the nature of the Creator, it's that he likes to play by the rules of nature and to do things in a way that's testable and understandable through science. Um, now before I get to the science, let me just say that it's really annoying to have to constantly pause slides to read a ton of text that readers are only given a second or two to digest. Um, split it into two or three videos if you can't make everything readable in ten minutes. First off, I don't care what most people think, but abiogenesis is not evolution. Abiogenesis is the formation of the first life form through organic chemistry. Evolution only happens with living things, and so by definition can have nothing to do with the chemistry that made the first organism. Um, just as Einstein's theory of general relativity requires matter to exist, evolution requires life to exist. Even if you somehow prove that God made matter, this would in no way affect the validity of general relativity, just as if you somehow proved that God made the first organism, this would in no way affect the validity of evolution. Um, second, no biologist claims that the first cell formed coincidentally from inanimate matter. Uh, the first cell took hundreds of millions of years to form. The first organism was likely a relatively short strand of RNA, somewhere in the order of a hundred letters, give or take. Um, RNA has all the properties necessary for simple life. It's a hereditary molecule, like DNA, with the tendency to mutate, creating variation for natural selection to work. It also has enzymatic properties necessary to promote replication and co-option of other molecules. Uh, further, the basic organic components of RNA form naturally throughout the universe, so all we are missing is the chemical mechanism that combine them, though there are many avenues of research that are making progress into this. Um, third, a single modern bacterium is far advanced compared to the first cell. A modern bacterium is the product of about four billion years of evolution, and so is way beyond the first cells, which have long since gone extinct. So Shapiro's calculation of the probability of all the proteins in a modern bacterium coming together by random chance is meaningless. Um, all modern cells are the product of four billion years of evolution, not random chance. Also, his calculation is only the probability of one very specific combination of very specific proteins occurring by chance. That's like calculating the probability of a very specific arrangement of atoms in a pebble occurring by chance. Sure, each pebble is ridiculously improbable, but there are an infinite number of ways that the atoms in a pebble can be arranged. Similar similarly, who knows how many possible chemical configurations can form a thing with the properties of life. Fourth. This calculation completely ignores natural selection, which is used in modern computer simulations to evolve airplane wings and oil pipeline networks that ultimately end up looking very similar to blood vessels. These simulations are simply programs that use the same equations used by population genetics to geneticists to predict changes in natural populations, plus random mutations slightly changing the shape of the wing or the pipeline. Complexity can evolve this way, and this has been demonstrated countless times. Um, fifth, modern organisms aren't randomly created, but are instead the descendants of other organisms. Through natural selection, combinations of genes that work to work tend to leave more descendants. Um, so each of the organisms you mentioned, uh, birds, mammals, etc., are highly genetically related to the others. These gene combinations therefore didn't have to all occur independently, unlike with special creation mentioned in Genesis where they did all occur independently. So the number of changes required to have the diversity of modern life we see are actually minimized by common descent. Finally, the probability of miracles from God is not one out of one. No matter what you or anyone else believes, you can't calculate the probability of miracles because they are isolated events that aren't repeatable in any way. In fact, if we were able, if we were to attempt to ca calculate the probability of a single specific miracle, the best we could do is to say that it is basically infinitely improbable since we have no records of any specific miracle ever being duplicated. I'm, I'm sorry, but you can't justify your belief in miracles with science and statistics 
Whether you believe they happen or not is ultimately just a matter of faith. If you want to be spiritually fulfilled and not constantly at war with the advancement, advancing front of science, I would suggest that you abandon your God of the gaps theology and accept that if God exists, he acts through the natural world in a way that we can understand through science. Otherwise, your God will continue to shrink as science explains our universe through testable natural means. Peace.